terrible to welcome back to my channel welcome to my march tbr video these are some of the books that i have my sights set on to read during march and at the end of the month we'll come back and we'll see whether i read some of them or all of them or none of them while i didn't quite stick to my tbr plans in february i was quite fine with that and i'm allowing myself that freedom this month as well i have about 20 books that I have set aside that I'm thinking about reading during March. And if I read most of them, that would be great. But if I don't read them, and it's because I'm reading books that are a little bit more relevant to me during the month, I'm fine with that too. But let's start with the plans before we start thinking about how we're going to not follow the plans. The first book that I'm gonna be reading that I'm sure I'm going to be reading in March is one that I've told you about before. It is Gandhi, The Years That Changed the World. This is 1914 to 1948, the biography of Gandhi's life during this period. I'm going to be reading this as a buddy read with Mr. Brown. We're going to be reading it. We're going to be discussing the impact that Gandhi had on the people in India, but also people all around the world. And I know the basic outline of Gandhi's life, that he was a Hindu and he was a lawyer, he studied, he preached nonviolence to his people and through his acts of hunger strikes and passive resistance, he was able to help affect change for billions of people in the world. And I want to know more about him. This book is over 800 pages long. And so this is a book that we're reading for the March of the Mammoths, which is the challenge to read books that are over 800 pages during March. And this is the only one that I'm putting on my TBR that I'm sure I'm going to read. I'd also like to get to War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, but I didn't even pick it up off my shelf yet because I want to see how the month shakes out before I add another mammoth to my TBR. I don't want to set myself up to fail my TBR plans. This was written by Ramachandra Guha. He's written another biography of Gandhi's life before this period, but we're starting here because we're not as interested in the period of his life where he was in South Africa, even though I understand that that is what leads him to this period of time. We want to read this one first. So this is the one book that I'm sure I'm going to start reading in March. In fact, we're starting it today, March 1st. Other books that I have, most of these are books that I got from the library. So I'm going to try to see how many of them I can read before they're due back. I have Les by Andrew Sean Greer, which is a 2018 Pulitzer Prize winner. And this one is about a novelist, a middle-aged man who gets invited to his ex-boyfriend's wedding and starts contemplating the choices that he's made in his life. And what he needs to do is to start getting some wins. I'm looking forward to reading a book about a novelist and especially a Pulitzer Prize winner. I also have Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan on my TBR. I'm reading this for a challenge where I need to read a book that was adapted to a movie and I know there's been a lot of hype about this book and its sequel and the movie and is there a sequel to the movie as well but I haven't read it and I finally picked this one up from the library and this one I don't need to tell you the synopsis but I'll tell you anyway because I don't know it says when New Yorker Rachel Chu agrees to spend the summer in Singapore with her boyfriend Nicholas Young she envisions a humble family home and quality time with a man she hopes to marry, but Nick has failed to give his girlfriend a few key details. One, that his childhood home looks like a palace. Two, that he grew up riding in more private planes and cars. And three, that he just happens to be the country's most eligible bachelor. So that's new. I thought this book was set in China. This book is set in Singapore. I didn't realize that. This is my opportunity to read a new country. I'm very excited that I might read this tomorrow. I also have The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I got this one from the library. I had to return it because it was due and I couldn't renew it. And then I got it again. And this time I need to read it before it comes due to be renewed. Because it's a popular book and I don't think I can renew it. So I'm giving myself until Monday, March 4th to start this book. And you're going to be hearing about it from me because I'm also going to be starting a little series on my Insta stories. I know this is not revolutionary, just that I don't do it. But I'm going to be doing it now. I'm going to give you daily updates on my reading on my Insta stories. So if you're not following me on Instagram, click my link down below in the description box. And check out my Instagram feed. I'm going to be doing short updates on what I'm reading on my Insta stories. I don't have to tell you what this book is about, right? Most people know, but let's tell you again. It's about 
a murder. Murder is about to be committed and someone, every day they wake up, they're in this new body, they're in this new identity and they have seven and a half days to find who's about to commit the murder and probably stop it, something like that. I've heard a lot of things about this book, some good reviews, some bad reviews and some just general interest and I'm one of those who's really interested in this book and want to know more about it by reading it. I started this book in February. I didn't get very far. I was reading too many other books to really spend the time that I want to spend with Miss Tony, And so I decided to push it, even though I was so excited to read this book. I had a lot of other books about black history that I wanted to read in February and March. This is my black history book that I'm going to be focusing on. Well, one of them. This is the source of self-regard, selected essays, speeches, and meditations by Toni Morrison. You're going to hear about this from me. I'm actually going to read this one. I'm going to start again because I didn't give it the attention that it needed in the beginning. So I'm going to be starting again with page one and 340 something pages. I think my plan is to read 10 to 15 pages of this one every day and share it with you. So expect to hear from me about this one, probably on my Insta stories, probably on here. Also picked up The Half Brother by Lars Sabi Christensen. This is a Norwegian writer and I was recommended to read this one by a friend, a booktuber. I still don't know her name. I'm gonna tell you. But this one is about two brothers. One is the product of a rape. His mother was raped on V-Day, the day when, the, when World War II ended. And while the world war was over, her private war began because now she's the mother of a child born of hate. And she also has another child. And this book is about the relationship between the two half brothers. And when one becomes a writer, how he represents the rest of the family in his writing. And I'm looking forward to reading this, but it is a giant book. It's not a giant book. It's only 600 and something pages. Not quite enough to qualify for the March of the Mammoths, but a big book nonetheless in a month where I already have big books. But to break that up, I also have these graphic novels that I'm looking forward to reading. I have Persepolis, The Story of a Childhood by Marjan Satrapi. No one corrected my pronunciation yet, so I'm going to keep going with Marjan Satrapi. This one is about growing up in Iran during the Islamic Revolution, so I'm looking forward to reading this one, as well as the two of the three books that are in this series, The Arab of the Future by Riyad Satouf, and this one is set in the period 1978 to 84, 1984 to 1985, and I have the third book on hold at the library, hopefully it will come in in March. And I'm looking forward to reading these as well. This one is about another child growing up in the presence of an Islamic family and an Islamic background and what it means as his family moves back and forth between these different countries trying to accomplish their goals. I'm not sure what they are yet. I have to read the book first. So I'm looking forward to getting to those. And those are some of the books that I have on my March TBR. I have other books that I'm going to show you that I don't know if they're going to be in March or they're going to be in April. Books that I got from the library. The Overstore by Richard Powers. This one is 600 and something pages. Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rail. My Husband's Wife by Jane Corey. How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. If You Leave Me by Crystal Hannah Kim. And Love and Ruin by Paula McLean. All of those are books that I have out from the library and I'd like to read them before I have to renew them. If I can renew them up to the end of the month and I finish this stack, then I'll add those others. I also have Man Booker books. I have, I think, six Man Booker books that I need to read in March so I can catch back up to my schedule. One of those includes the book club read, which is The Sea the Sea by Iris Murdoch, which I don't yet have, but I need to get because the book club discussion is due on March 25th. So more on that later. And oh, if you want to get a copy of the schedule, check out the link in my Etsy shop. I've made up a list, a schedule, a postcard. A bookmark whatever you want to call this <laughs> I've made it up that shows all the books that we're reading for the run right reads book club in 2019 so check out the link down below if you want to get one of these and so yeah I also have net galley books because I pushed my net galley purge away from February I didn't get to any of those books so I'm not gonna tell you that list again because I've told you that list now for two months 
and I made absolutely no progress on it in February but in March we're getting back to that I have one more book one more book that I started in February didn't get very far I want to read in March just because it's so important and that is James Baldwin's Go Tell It on the Mountain I got this one as well as The Fire Next Time from the library and in February I only managed to read The Fire Next Time but I'm so excited now to read all of James Baldwin's writings that since I have this from the library I want to read it before I have to return it and also it's a brand new book how often you get brand new books from the library and I started it in February I got to maybe page five I wasn't able to focus on it I just didn't have time to read anything else and so I'm gonna be reading this in March so we're adding this to my list of definites as well as my list of maybes there are a lot of books let me know in the comments down below what your March reading plans are. If you've made a March TBR video, leave me a link down below and I'll go watch it. Otherwise, tell me the book. If there's a book that you started in February and didn't get to finish and you're pushing over to your March TBR, I'd love to hear that as well. I'd like to know that I'm not the only person who didn't read all the books that they started reading in a month and are carrying things over to the next month. This is all about community. I need to know that there are other people like me. So if that's you, let's talk in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll talk down there. So until next time, until I get over my tendency to hold up stacks of books that are bigger than I can hold. Until then.